So in unit one, we were talking about how we can identify different graphical characteristics, like above x-axis, below x-axis, increasing, decreasing, function values, output values, all that good stuff. And the reason we were focusing on identifying characteristics of graphs is because we're going to use those characteristics in this unit to help us graph polynomials by hand. Okay, not uh, necessarily using a calculator to help us with that. So polynomial functions um, are like those quadratics, those cubics. We're going to take a look at quartics and quintics in this unit as well. Um, but they're basically roller coaster type graphs where they have a bunch of dips and curves going on. So we're going to see a lot of those types of pictures in this unit. So uh, we can identify at least for this section we're going to be factoring cubics, quartics, and quintics. It's going to be a little bit of a review because we did kind of factoring at the beginning of the year, but factoring is going to play a huge role in this unit. So I just want to make sure that we're uh, good with these skills. Okay, so a little bit of, of a review for this section. We're used to factoring uh, quadratics, x squareds, okay, um, we're used to like the I am factoring, I think that I mentioned that earlier this year, we talked about GCF, we talked about uh, grouping, maybe even divide and slide, you have some options there, so we're going to review some of those, but see how those same techniques can be used for cubics, quartics, and quintics. So in terms of factoring, out of all of our techniques, is there one of them that should really be done first, if possible? If you think about uh, the I am factoring, the grouping factoring, the divide and slide, the GCF, the difference of perfect squares, is there one that we should try first? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Exactly. If you can pull something out, if it has a greatest common factor, go ahead and remove it. That way it makes all the numbers or the variables smaller, okay, kind of easier to work with. So we'll say our first thing in terms of factoring, if it's possible, we'll factor out the GCF. Okay, always look for that first. Sometimes you can't take something out, which is okay, but at least you tried tried to make it easier. Okay, so that's going to lead us into some of these other techniques. Okay, maybe we could pull a GCF out, maybe we couldn't. Where can we go from there? It all depends on what the uh, polynomial or expression looks like. So for these first three examples, um, we're going to look for perfect squares. So these three examples are going to be like those difference of perfect squares. Remember, difference means subtraction. So you always need to be subtracting perfect squares. Can we list some perfect squares? Like when I say look for perfect squares, what are you looking for? What do perfect squares look like? Yeah. OK. 4, 16, 9. 25, right, notice how it's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. We could keep going, 6 squared, 7 squared, so on and so forth. Okay, what about variables? Yeah, x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, x to the 8th, yep. Okay, those are all perfect squares. All right, so let's take a look at some of these examples. We're going to look for these perfect squares. In the first one, okay, remember, if possible, always try to pull something out first, GCF, because the way it looks right now, we don't really have any of these perfect squares showing up in this example. So at first glance, you might not think difference of perfect squares, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Do you see something? Yeah. All right, so let's factor out or divide out that 2x. That's what both terms have in common as a factor. And we'd be left with an x squared minus 16 if we were to divide that 2x out. 
Now do we have any of those perfect squares showing up? Yeah, okay, so I'm curious. Do we remember how the factoring of difference of perfect squares work? Notice how we have x squared and 16. How do we break up those perfect squares? Yeah. Right, one's plus and one's minus, good. All right, let's take a look at the next one. At first glance, it doesn't really look like a difference of perfect squares, but maybe we can remove something. Maybe it'll turn into that. Do we have a GCF? Yeah. 3x. 3x, okay. So if we divide everything by 3x, we'll have 4 minus x squared. 4 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and we are subtracting them, aka difference. So we should be able to go a little bit further with our factoring. If we broke up or factored 4 minus x squared, what would those factors look like? Maybe use the previous one as an example, help you out. Yeah. Okay, so you would think, right, because the x normally came first here, okay? Um, but the reason that this x came first was because that was the first term in the factor above. So this one's not necessarily x plus 2, x minus 2. Yeah. 2 minus x and 2 plus x. It switches, right, okay? It's always based off of the order of the terms previously. So if the 4 is the first perfect square written, then the 2s need to be... Uh, written first in the factors. Little different. Okay. Can you guys try the last one? Always try GCF first. Any takers? Yeah, good, Marie. Um, what if we, well, do we yeah, go ahead. What What did you do first? Yeah. Okay. Um. Right. I under, I understand why you did that, but it doesn't exactly work out that way. Um, but I can understand why you did that. Can we notice the perfect squares here, x to the fourth and the 16? What do you think, Emily? x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. Okay, so if we use the same thought process as we did on the other two, we can break up x to the fourth as x squared and x squared, and then 16 as 4 and 4. Okay, difference of perfect squares, you can break them up 1 plus 1 minus. Can we keep going, though? Do we have another type of factoring we can do? What do you see, Tori? Right. Okay, so for this factor here, notice how it's a difference. You're subtracting, and both of those are, are perfect squares as well. So we can keep going again. The perfect square of x is x, and the perfect square of t uh, 4 is 2. One's plus, one's minus. The other one, though, even though it looks similar, is a sum of perfect squares because you're adding. That one, unfortunately, does not factor, so we're just going to keep it the same. So we actually did three uh, factoring, not, not three factoring techniques, but three steps of factoring. We pulled out a GCF, then we were able to do a difference of squares, and then we were able to do different squares again. Okay, so we're going to keep factoring and factoring and factoring until we can't factor anymore. Okay, we're going to try to go as far as we can. So I know we're familiar with perfect squares. Okay, that one seemed to go fairly easy. We are going to look at something that's probably new to you guys. Um, I don't think you have ever done cubes before. Is that right? We probably haven't done cubes. They're a little bit different. Okay, so we're going to look for perfect cubes in these next examples. And what's a little bit different for these is that these can be sums or differences. So you can be adding perfect cubes or subtracting perfect cubes and you would be able to factor it. That's what's a little bit different than the perfect squares. You have to be subtracting in that case. OK? 
okay? So can we list some perfect cubes like we did for the squareds before? Yeah. Eight, okay. Two times two times two? 27, three times three times three. 64, yep, four times four times four. <laughs> Ooh, 125, close. Five times five times five, okay. Um, you can keep going, they just continue to get larger. What about in terms of some variables? X times X times X, yeah. X cubed, okay. What about X squared times X squared times X squared? X to the sixth. X to the ninth. Okay, notice how the powers are multiples of three, okay, whereas before the powers were multiples of two, okay, a little bit of a pattern there. Um, when it comes time to factor these, we have two different, I wonder if I have room to write these. We're going to go up to the top and write these ones down. Um, we have two different formats that we're going to look for. We're going to use one format if we're adding these cubes together, okay, if we're summing them. And then we're going to have a different format if we are subtracting the perfect cubes. So they're going to look a little bit different. I'm, I'm thinking you guys haven't really seen these before, but we'll write these down at the top. So let's say that we have a difference of perfect cubes. Okay, we'll say a cubed minus b cubed, whatever a and b might be. They could be numbers, they could be variables. We specifically factor that difference as such, okay? We have one factor as a minus b, and then the remaining factor is a little strange, okay? a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay, we're going to have to reference these uh, kind of formulas to help us because this is a little new, but hopefully we're going to do enough of them that it will become second nature to you. The other option is if we are adding the perfect cubes together. In this case, the first factor is going to be a plus b. And the second factor is going to look very similar, but the first operation in this case is subtracting. So we have a squared minus ab and then plus b squared. Okay, so we'll reference those two uh, perfect cube factoring formulas when we go through uh, some of the examples down below, okay? Now I'm gonna move this off the screen, but you guys have it in front of you, right? You wrote them down? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one x cubed minus 27. Are those two perfect cubes like we listed? We listed x cubed and 27, and notice how we are subtracting them, okay? So in this first example, can we identify perhaps what is a and what is b? What is the perfect cube of x cubed and what is the perfect cube of 27? What can you multiply by itself three times and it would give you x cubed? Yeah, x, okay, so that's kind of like your a value. That's the perfect cube that relates to the first term. What's the perfect cube of 27? Yeah, three, so that's like your b value. That's the other perfect cube that's showing up in this expression, yeah. Um, no, the, the minus just means that you're subtracting, okay? So if we can use x is a and 3 is b, we're going to fill in those values into the appropriate formula from the top, okay? But notice how we are subtracting, so we have to use the subtracting option. So this expression is the same as, okay, if we look up top, we need one factor of a minus b, so that would look like x minus 3. And then the second factor, we need a squared, which would be x squared, <coughs> plus a times b, or in this case, x times 3, or 3x, however you want to write it. 
And then the last term is adding b squared, which would just be 3 squared, aka 9. Okay, so that's how we can factor that difference of perfect cubes. You have to identify what is a, what is b, and then use the appropriate formula whether you're adding or subtracting. Okay, you might, you might have to reference them, but that's okay because they're new. All right, take a look at the next one. Do we have a sum or a difference of perfect cubes? Can we use a different factoring technique maybe initially to help us out? Yeah. All right, let's take out a GCF of 2x. So we're left with x cubed plus 8. Can we use a different technique? Good, Marie? All right, so we are adding two perfect cubes. Let's go ahead and reference the top to use that uh, factoring formula. So your A value is X, and it looks like your B value is 2, okay, the perfect cube of 8. So if we are adding, our first factor is A plus B, or in this case, X plus 2. And the second factor, we need A squared, so that would be X squared, minus A times B, so that would be 2 times X and then adding b squared, so 2 squared would change into a 4. Okay, so there are the factors from the second example. Can you guys try the last one? Remember, always try GCF first, make the numbers easier to work with, and then maybe you can try a different technique. Anybody want to give it a shot? See how you did? Got it, Marie? Yeah. Yep. J well, just go. What'd you do first, and then we'll we'll keep. Okay. So you were left with x to the third plus sixty-four. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Perfect, okay, so we are adding perfect cubes. Our perfect cube for x cubed is x, our perfect cube for 64 is four. So if we're adding those, we need an x plus four as the first factor, and then the second factor, we have x squared minus four x plus 16. How'd you do? Pretty good? Okay, so I know we're really used to perfect squares. Those are kind of the easy ones, one's plus, one's minus. And you always have to be subtracting, okay, the difference of perfect squares. But for perfect cubes, we don't really have that nice format. You could be adding, you could be subtracting, but it's not just one's plus, one's minus. Okay, you gotta use uh, one of those top, depending if you're adding or subtracting. So it's just a little bit different. Are we okay with that one, a new technique we can add? Okay, let's take out the next or take a look at the next one. Um, these were the ones that we kind of went over at the beginning of the year where you had options. Okay, I think we talked about either the grouping method or the divide and slide. So we're going to go over those two techniques just because I know some of you are more familiar or comfortable with one than the other. Um, but regardless of which one of those you choose, okay, divide and slide or grouping, they both start out the same way. 
Okay, so can we kind of think back to how we start either of those grouping or divide and slide techniques when we have three terms and we want to factor them? Yeah? Okay, so we're, we're just going to go ahead and assume that these are equal to zero for now. We're going to talk about that idea in the next section, but okay, we'll assume they're equal to zero. Do you know what you would do next, or is that what you, what, what you would want to do first? Yeah, help out? Okay, so we're going to identify the A, B, and C values. and then find the numbers that multiply to A times C but add to B. All right. So what's kind of important about this one is that your polynomial is always written in what's called standard form, where your largest exponent comes first, and then the next largest exponent comes next, and then so on and so on. It kind of goes in progression. Because if these were all jumbled, uh, the A, B, and C values would show up in different places. So writing it in standard form or that order might not be a bad idea to initially start out with. So it looks like our A value is 2 and our C value is 20. So we've got to multiply together to get 40. Now, realistically, we know we should have at least tried to look for a GCF first, right? I kind of skipped over that because at first glance, there's nothing you can take out of a 2, a 13, and a 20. So I just kind of ruled that one out. So we have no choice but to do 2 times 20, which would be 40. And we're going to have to add to a negative 13. So can we think of two numbers that multiply to 40 but add to a negative 13? Yeah. Negative 8 and negative 5. Negative 8 and negative 5. Okay. So this is where you have options. From this step, now that you have those values, you can either choose the grouping technique or the divide and slide. Okay. Do we have one preference over the other? I mean, we have three examples, so I can do one one time, the other technique another way. Yeah. You like to divide and slide? Okay, or maybe we just want a refresher on both of them. We can do that too. Okay, so do we remember how the divide and slide works? Maybe, maybe not. You're shaking your head. You want to give it a shot? Not on this one? <laughs> okay. Um, well, the factors we found were negative 8 and negative 5, so we're going to go ahead and write those in. And typically, we write x and x, right? But that's just if it's a quadratic. If your original equation has a power of 2, notice how this equation has a power of 4. This is considered quartic. So instead of writing x and x, if you're originally starting out with 4 x's, we're going to put 2 in each factor. Okay, we're going to evenly break up those four x's. All right, so that's the initial setup. Okay, but in terms of dividing and sliding, we're going to divide those values by what number? Yeah? Say it again. It's not the c value. Yeah? the A value, it's that 2, okay? So we'll divide by 2. 8 minus 2 does simplify, so that would give us 4. 5 over 2 does not simplify to a whole number, so this is where the slide part kind of comes into play. We're going to slide that 2 in front of the x squared as a coefficient. All right, so we're done with divide and slide as a factoring technique. Can we take either of those factors further? Do you notice any other method you could use? Yeah. 
the first one, right, we have a difference of perfect squares. So perfect square of x is x, perfect square of 4 is 2, 1's plus, 1's minus. Uh, the other factor, though, cannot be taken any further, so it's just going to stay the same. All right, so divide and slide. You got to first figure out those numbers, write them in your factors, divide by A, and slide anything out front if it doesn't simplify. Okay, we'll go ahead and try the next one. So A times C would be negative 5. Our B value is 4. Two numbers that multiply to negative 5 but add to 4. Can we try a little guessing game, go Tori? 5 and negative 1. Okay, so at this step, you have options. Do we want to try grouping as a refresher or do we want to do a, another divide and slide? Do we have a preference? Hmm? You like the divide and slide? Is that okay? Yeah? Okay, so we're going to have one factor with a positive 5, another factor with a negative 1, and we're going to break up the largest number of x's, which in this case was x to the 4th, uh, evenly into those two factors. So two x's in the first one, two x's in the second one. All right, so let's actually go through the divide and slide. We're going to divide by a, which is just what? Isn't our a value 1? Okay, and dividing by 1 really isn't going to change anything. So notice how those factors that we have are just going to remain the same. Okay? Can we continue to factor? Can we use another technique? Yeah. Right, the last factor we have there is a difference of perfect squares. So the first one's not going to change, but we'll have an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. Good. All right. Let's try the last one. Um, always GCF first. I keep forgetting to check that. Okay, but let's go ahead and try that for this one. Is there anything we can pull out of all those terms that they have in common? Yeah. A 2x. Okay, so we're left with x to the fourth minus a 5x squared plus 4. All right, so take a look at the, the grouping that's inside those parentheses. Maybe we can factor that a little bit further. Let's see, our a times c value is 4. Our b value is negative 5. Two numbers that multiply to 4 but add to a negative 5. Yeah. Negative 4, negative 1. All right. So in terms of the divide and slide, we have one factor with a minus 4, one factor with a minus 1, and we're going to take those x to the fourths that we started with and evenly split them up between the two factors, which means each factor gets two x's. All right, so let's actually go through the divide and slide. The a value is 1. Okay, after we took out that 2, it changed to a 1. So if we divide those uh, negative 4 and negative 1 by 1, that's not really going to change anything. So we can just leave it the way it is. You see something else? Yeah. They're, they're both perfect squares, right? We can take each one of those factors a little bit further. So we're going to have a lot of factors for this one. Um, x squared minus 4 is going to factor as x plus 2, x minus 2. And then x squared minus 1 is going to factor as x plus 1 and an x minus 1. A lot of little groups there. Okay, so the big idea, at least from these techniques that we're looking at on, on the front, is always try GCF first. And as you're going through the factoring techniques, okay, you may have to use more than one. 
Okay, maybe you start out with GCF and then you do the divide and slide and then you do per difference of perfect uh, squares like we did in that last one. Okay, so uh, we'll say completely factor, meaning you may have to use more than one to keep simplifying it. Are we doing okay so far? Are these kind of coming back to us a little bit? I know the cube one was new, most likely, okay? But the other ones we talked about earlier this year, okay? Um, what we're going to do on the back is we're going to review grouping because I know some, some of you like that uh, method as well. Grouping, though, is very, very useful when you have four terms, okay? If you notice for a second on the page we just completed, all of those expressions had either two terms or three terms, okay? Grouping, though, is kind of your go-to factoring technique whenever you have four. Okay, so maybe we'll write that at the top. Now, I know we're kind of familiar with the grouping technique, so you may not have to reference the little uh, notes or steps on the side, okay? But maybe we'll, we'll take a look at those, at least for this first one. Always order the terms greatest to least degree. Degree meaning power or exponent. So always make sure the powers kind of go in order. Um, we're going to go ahead and group the first two terms and the last two terms. So we'll group the 2x cubed and the 3x squared and then the negative 8x and the minus 12. Then we're going to take a look at some GCFs. Okay, what can we pull out of those groups that we created? Do you see something? Yeah. Can we take out two x's? That's okay. Okay, so if we take out two x's from the first group, we're left with two x plus three. Yeah? And we're left with a 2x plus 3. Okay, so notice how the 2x plus 3s, that kind of leftover stuff, um, matches, right? That's really important when you're going through this grouping technique. Okay, these have to match. If they don't, then the grouping technique is not going to work. Okay, so your leftover factors have to match. So how can we write the two factors then based off of this grouping and GCF that we've done so far? Yeah. X squared minus 4 and 2x plus There we go. Okay, so one factor is comprised of the GCFs that you removed, the 2x and the minus 4. And the other factor is that leftover matching piece, in this case 2x plus 3. All right. Um, so just like any other factoring techniques, maybe you could stop here, but maybe you can keep factoring. Okay, keep going if possible. So when you look at these factors that you created, can we use another technique on one of them? Or both of them sometimes? Do you see something else we could do? Go ahead, Hannah. There we go. So we got x plus 2, x minus 2, and then 2x plus 3. Good. Can you guys try the next one in the little box? The steps are on the left-hand side if you want to reference them, but maybe you don't have to because you're familiar with it.
what were your GCFs from those two groupings? What could you pull out of the first? What could you pull out of the second? Yeah. Okay, so if you pull an x squared out of the first group, you're left with a 2x plus 1, and then negative 9 out of the second, you'll get the 2x plus 1 that matches. Good. Okay, so our two factors initially, x squared minus 9 and a 2x plus 1, looks good. Sometimes you might have to stop right there, okay? But maybe you can keep going. Can you try anything else? Can you take this first factor further, the second factor further, or are we done? Yeah. You could simplify the first one. Yep, we do get a difference of perfect uh, squares. So one's plus, one's minus. Good. How'd you do? Good? All right, masters, go ahead and try on the last two. Any takers on the first one? Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, and what were you left with? Sounds good. All right. There you go. Okay, so then what were your two factors? Perfect. Were you done or did you keep going? I kept going. I keep the first group and I got x plus 1 and x minus 1. So there was a difference of perfect squares. You could take it a little bit further. How do we do? Two thumbs up. All right. Takers on the last one. Good, Tori. Sounds good. All right, so what were your two factors? All right, were you done or could you keep going? Okay, how did that one go? All right, so the first factor, again, is a difference of perfect squares. Okay, 4 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square, and you're subtracting. So we have the 2x and the 2x from the 4x squared, and then the 1 and the 1 from the previous one, okay? How do we do? Perfect? Wonderful, okay, so reviewing factoring techniques, hopefully we didn't lose them, but this was just a refresher. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna to take a look at why factoring is so important, how does it relate to the graph, okay? What does that tell us about the graph of a polynomial function? So we'll talk about um, that connection tomorrow.